Hi, I'm Bill Woodard. Welcome to the June edition of the Smith County Chamber Corner, and we're going to be talking about the Smith County Fair. All right, we have got something really exciting to talk about, and it's the Smith County Fair on the river. And uh, every year it gets better. Uh, every year I've been to it, I, I've been impressed by the way it goes on. And we've got a gentleman here that's gonna just present some stuff to us. Mr. Stan Webster has been with the fair since the inception. And Stan, 16 you would, years, 16, 16 years, years yeah. Right. Yeah, right. And, it, and it's been wonderful. And so uh, tell us what's going on with the fair. Well, uh, just a few things I wanna hit on. Uh, first of all, when you come to the fair this year, you're going to notice that our gate charge is still $5, just like it's been for the last I don't know how many years. Yeah. And uh, as you and I were talking earlier in the day, uh, we don't make a lot of money. Uh, in fact, the last couple of years, we've, we've come out, you know, kind of on the short end of the stick financially, but nothing, nothing major. So we had to make some tough decisions. These decisions were, number one, increase the gate price. And we didn't want to do that because we want everybody to come to the fair. <clears throat> so we decided we want to leave it at $5. Number two was cut back on what we were offering. We didn't want to do that. We wanted, uh, we wanted people to come out. Uh, and I'll give you an example. Right here on this stage we're sitting on, we've got two groups that will be playing here during the fair that have records that are charted right now mm -hmm. in the top. Uh, 50, 70, something like that. I'd have to call to check to be for sure, but right. we still want to have name brand entertainment. So for five bucks, you can come out here to the fair. You can see record charting uh, acts. You can see a demolition derby. You can see a championship truck pool. You can see a tractor pool. You can see a mud run. You can see a beauty pageant for five bucks. Well, the money's got to come from somewhere. So at convention, we kind of went to a few sessions and talked to other fairs as to what they were doing. And we kind of took the model Putman County Fair was doing. They'd gone to sponsorship levels. So we sat down and we looked at what people, the businesses and the sponsors and the people that we had that were helping us. And we came up with, with uh, several sponsorship levels. The diamond level is $3,500. The emerald level is $1,500. The gold level is a thousand, silver is five hundred, all the way down to bronze, and even a friend of the fair. So, with that thirty-five hundred dollars, <coughs> the uh, the businesses get name recognition and they get certain perks. Now, our diamond sponsors this year are, and these are in no particular order: Citizens Bank, DTC, Poindexter Realty and Auction, Wilson Bank and Trust, Sanderson Funeral Home. Bates Ford, Rackley Roofing, UCEMC, and UCEMC Cares. Now, this doesn't mean that, that each of these businesses wrote us, cut us a check for $3,500. Some of them did. Others, it would be in kind. In other words, things that they are doing for the fair that we would have to pay for otherwise. Now, our, uh, our other sponsors, our Emerald sponsors are Bon Ale and the Smith Farmers Co-op. There we go, Bill. Thank you. Our gold sponsors, Clark Lumber, Kyle Owens Farm, Smith County Bank, Senator John Rose, Senator Paul Bailey, Riverview Regional, Smith County Hardware, Carthage Saveway, and then we get down into our $500 sponsors, uh, Farm Bureau, Hotel Walton, Farm Credit, Pal Tire, Wildwood Resort, Smith County Animal Clinic, uh, Representative Michael Hale, Powell Meadows Insurance, Discover Realty Auction. And all of these sponsors all the way down are making it possible for us to be able to put this, to put this fair on. So uh, if, you, if you see any of these businesses or see any of the people that are responsible, if you would please thank them because they're keeping the gate price down where you can come and, uh, and enjoy, enjoy the fair. Now, a couple of other things I want to hit on, Bill. Okay. Uh, 
Anthony Apple, of course, is co-chairman with me, and uh, he does certain things, tractor pull, things like that. I take care of the entertainment stages. I line up the acts for the uh, for the rotary stage, which we're sitting on, and also the Wilson Bank Kids stage. Monday night, right here on this stage, we're going to have Aaron Carver. Tuesday night, we're going to have our apple pie contest. That's the 4th of July. Now, also on the 4th of July, we're going to have a four-mile kayak race. Four miles on the 4th of July. You'll figure that out in a minute, Bill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we will have uh, those two events, 4th of July. Wednesday night, we got the Smith County Men's Chorus. Thursday night, our own Ty Gregory. Now, Ty will be performing a full-blown concert here. He will be, uh, he will be performing uh, an acoustic set with Dennis uh, over with, uh, along with Tommy Howell over inside. That's the 104.1. That's their main their stage. Their, their, stage, their, stage yeah. their main concert inside. Inside. The Friday night, Center. Tennessee Outlaw Country with Josh Winfrey. That's a, they have a record that's, that's uh, on the charts now. And then Saturday night, Randy Harris and the Victors out of Lebanon. Yeah, I think they've actually got two. Ghost Train was the first one, and I think they got another got one. Got another one? Yeah. Hey, yeah, that's pretty neat. That is pretty neat. And I, I talked uh, I talked with Josh, and I talked with uh, Howboy the other day, and, 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 you know, they come here and put this show on for pennies compared to what they get at other places. Now, we give them, some, we give them a little money. Uh, the money we get to pay these... Uh, pay these uh, uh, bands and our craftspeople that will be here in the village. Uh, uh, UCEMC Cares is very generous with us, and also Wilson Bank. They put up money to pay for their stage. Now, speaking of Wilson Bank stage, that's what we call the kids' stage. That's in the food court. Monday, uh, Monday night, we've got David Turner, the ventriloquist. Tuesday night, we've got Roger Reeves. You know, he's the magician. Wednesday night, Susanna Winfrey. Uh, Susanna from Mowart Gornsville, she's played this stage, the Rotary stage. It's been three or four years ago. Thursday night, we got David back, and then Friday night, we got Roger again. And then Saturday night, we're Don Knapple on his keyboard. We did this last year on Saturday night because historically, that's our biggest crowd. We have the most people in the food court, and they like to listen to good, easily listening music, and right. he, he, he does that. He does a wonderful job. He does. He does a fantastic job. But uh, that's basically the things that I, I kind of watch after. If you got any questions, Bill, and other well, things that... I, I can't think of anything, but one thing I'd like to point out is just about every night you're giving away either 250 or $500 cash. Correct. Citizens Bank, and that's part of the recognition. They put up, two, they've been putting up $2,000 from the inception of the fair to give away, and, and that is that is part of their sponsorship of their $3,500 that they put up. We felt like that these some of these businesses were already putting this money up that I was mentioning, and uh, they needed some recognition out of it other than just a name up on the, uh, uh, the, the billboard. So. Right, right. But we give the money away every night, uh, and of course Dale, will, he will hit on what's going on in the arena, he and Mr. Lish, uh, but we invite you out. As I said, it's going to be $5. Uh, five dollar to get you in, and uh, uh, I don't know where you could get a deal like that anywhere. Well, Most places you can't park for that. Yeah, exactly. They, they charge you fifteen dollars to park. Right, right, right. So, so, so it's a, it's a good event. Well, Stan, I, I I can't think of any other questions to ask you, but this fair uh, uh, guide that is put out, and you can pick them up at the. Uh, just about any business in town at the Chamber right. of Commerce, and they also sent them out with a newspaper. It's going out. Uh, it's going out uh, today with the newspaper. Yeah, and so yesterday. So uh, if you need to know anything about the fair, you can pick one of these up. Come by the chamber if you need to, and it's a wonderful little book, and it uh, lists all the sponsors, and uh, lists all the things that are going on. And there is so much going on, it's hard to talk about. Well, you just you can't list it all. The Carthage Courier does this for us each year. It won last year at the uh, Tennessee Association of Fairs annual convention. It won as premium tabloid of the year. In other words, and that's putting it in all against the the, the bigger fairs. But the Carthage Courier put out that program and it won last year. We placed second 
a couple of times and third, but we won that sucker last year. So. Yeah. Well, and Bill, I want to thank you guys too in, in running the chamber booth, the information booth. Uh, that's a big help because when people get here, they want to know where is this, where is this. We put a map in the center of the uh, program, but a lot of people, you know, they don't have a program or or whatever, and it's easier to uh, it's easier to maybe stop by your information booth and. Uh, well, and, and we we get a lot of help with that. The the museum uh, uh, folks uh, help us with that. And this year, there's a new group called uh, uh, Friends of Cordell Hall Lake. Right. And uh, I think they're going to be involved a little bit. And so uh, we've got some really good folks that are, are helping us with that information. Right. Group. Speaking of that, Carolyn and I are actually uh, members of that. That is going to be a neat deal when they get it put together. You know, they uh, a group got together, took two years. To get the Periwinkle Walking Trail yeah, uh, yeah. going up and up at Indian Creek Campground from Indian Creek Creek Campground to Wildwood Resort, it took two years to get the trail cut out, which I helped a little bit, not much, but just a little bit. But uh, it's it's going to be neat. And that yeah, group is, they had a grand opening, had about uh, fifty or seventy five people show up. I, I bet there's oh, I was there. It, 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 yeah, it was maybe like, more than that. Maybe more than that, right? Maybe more than that. And we've got the uh, Boy Scouts are getting involved. Uh, hopefully, there's a couple of places that may need some walk across bridges. But but we're here to talk about the fair and not the Periwinkle Trail. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, the Friends of Cordell Hill Lake is a is a growing group of people that is really I think it's going to bring Cordell Hill Lake to life. Well, we bring our tourism here. Yeah, we, we got a lot of good organizations in the county, and, and they're working toward the same goal, and that's gotcha. to make things better around here. And it's fair. That's, it's gotten better every year, like I said in the beginning, and uh, I'm expecting it to continue to improve. I tell you, one thing we've got going first is our youth board. Uh, Amanda Hicks, last year we got our youth board going. They are our salvation. I tell everybody that, that I was 60 years old before I knew there was anything to a fair besides a cattle barn. Now, we've been doing the fair for 16 years, so you do the math. And the most of us are getting older and can't do what we did back in the day. But Amanda has organized this group uh, with the help of the extension, and we've got a good group of kids that come over here and work. And we give them some perks. We Maybe they ride every a night or so, or, or we feed them or, or whatever, but they're hanging with their buddies, and they really, they're our future. Yeah, yeah. And, and you got to have that new blood come in and, and help run things. For sure. Well, Sam, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you for, for inviting us. Okay, we are still talking about the fair, and a gentleman came here. He's going to tell us some of the events that are going on. I think you actually take care of the arena, isn't that right, Dale? Yes, sir. I'm in charge of all anything goes on in the outdoor arena, such as uh, like on Monday night, we'll have the uh, four-wheel drive trucks that race across the mud. I think they go across the whole arena in like 1.2 seconds or something like that at oh, over wow. 100 miles an hour. Yeah. Uh, then on Tuesday night, I is that's july the 4th correct right that's july okay. the 4th on that night we're not having anything in the arena itself uh we're gonna have the fireworks and stuff you know for the fourth uh then on wednesday night we will have race tennessee series it's the four wheelers and the dirt bikes on the flat, flat track, track yep. racing mm -hmm. yes sir uh thursday night friday night we'll have the demolition derby on thursday night will be the stock night on friday night will be all the modified vehicles uh, Saturday, we'll have the uh, truck, truck and tractor pool. pool. Mm -hmm. and, that, and all of those are popular. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, every time I, I go by the arena, it, it's always full. People Usually watching Usually we those. fill the stands. Yeah. Very fortunate. And the truck tractor pool, sometimes it goes uh, late. Well, now the uh, antique tractor pool does the Saturday yeah. before. Yeah. Usually this tractor pool here, we try to have everybody out by 10 o'clock, well, depending on the weather. And, and the Saturday before, it starts at 6 p.m., so they, yes, they got plenty of time to get yes, sir. done what to do. Now, uh, there's another, on Saturday uh, at 7 a.m., you've got an event. Yes, sir. We will have the uh, Warrior by the River mud run on Saturday morning. Wait, 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 wait. Are you telling me that we're going to get to be here in Smith County, Tennessee, and we're going to get muddy and have a run? We are. We're going to run through the mud and play and climb hills and obstacles and be a lot of fun no, for the kids. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so, but it's just for the big guys and the big muscle head, right? Just big old boys well, like y'all. It's not necessarily for them at all. It's a, it's, it's a family event. So you think we, what, what, what about if I got like a five, six year old? You think they can come? Maybe eight, nine? Any age. Oh my goodness. Any okay, age. so how long? You think like three miles? I believe they actually done it as a 5K 
a couple of years in a row, and it's going to be close to that, about three, 3.2 miles. So we're going to have a mud run. We're going to get muddy. We're going to kind of run. Oh, my God. Uh, we'll have a water slide with well, the fire department spraying it down. We're going to have water. Okay, Dale, I got I to gotta go. I got to go train, folks. Y'all come out from here, County Fair, all outside arenas. Y'all come see Wild Bill. We're going to give away all kinds of gifts all week long. Y'all come see us. Woo! Peace out, baby. All right. I didn't know Cousin Bill was going to come. <laughs> I didn't either. Wild well, Bill, you don't never know where he's going to show up. I'm telling you, he's liable to show He's like a, uh, not a bad penny, a good one. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know. Depends <laughs> on how you rate him. Yeah, that, that's that's really good. Well, and, and you know what? He's right. Uh, that uh, Warrior by the River mud run, that's a lot of fun for any age. It is. I, myself, I don't heal quite like I used to. Not, <laughs> not that I'm old or anything, but I just uh, choose not to participate in that. Well, I, I can understand that. I, I believe uh, I'll probably set that one out myself. Yes, sir. Yeah, it have to take a little bit of training for that. Um, but we are going to have a lot of fun. We're going to have a lot of neat events. Like you said before, the demolition derby is one of our more, more popular events. We're going there for two years in a row through COVID and the year after we had the largest demolition derby in the state of Tennessee. Mm -hmm. We was having over a hundred cars participate in a two night event. This year, I don't know how many cars, you don't never know until the night of, but we will have plenty of vehicles and it will be a very, very good. Experience. And it's always fun to watch. Yes, I, 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 it's just amazing. Uh, what they can do, and, and, the, and the one that you think is going to win sometimes, yeah. they don't last no time, and the one that you think he, he looks like he can't even limp in, and yeah. he winds up being the last Some one. Some of the vehicles that are brought in here are pre-run cars. They've run at other derbies. Uh, that just, to me, I mean, they're they're a little bit more stacked to, to yeah. win yeah. Yeah. than yeah. the ones that are fresh out. Yeah, but that, 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 that's always a lot of fun. Well, Dale, um, I appreciate you coming by yes, sir, and Mr. talking about this, and uh, I guess the, the only other thing to say is come to the fair, right? Yes, sir. Come and, to the fair. And, and the fair, glad to have you. It's uh, it, actually Friday, June the 30th, they got an archery competition. The archery tournament, yes, sir. And then outside. Saturday, July the 1st is when there's uh, quite a few events coming on, and it goes through July the 8th. July the 8th, yes, and, sir. And, of course, fireworks on July the 4th. Yes, sir. So, uh, folks, come out to the fair. Uh, there's, there's more to talk about than we can talk about on this show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, there's so many events. It, we're adding new events each and every yeah. year to try to make the fair a little more appealing to everybody. Well, Dale, thank you a lot. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Bill. Uh, I'm Hollis Mullinax, and uh, I do the security for the fair with the help of South Carthage Police and the Smith County Sheriff's Department. Uh, I also do Senior Day, which we we're going to have this year, July, uh, June the 21st, 8 to 3, uh, no, 8 to 4. And we have, we have cornhole tournaments, ladder golf tournament, horseshoe tournament, if we have time permitted, with a bunch of seniors. And if it gets real hot here, here, we usually go back inside and do a, the last thing. We have a, a single cornhole tournament if, if the weather permits. On uh, Friday night, I have a horseshoe tournament, July the 7th, register 5.30, pitch at 6.30, $20 for team. We draw for partners. Prize money is based on sponsorship. And on Saturday, I have a cornhole tournament. We register at one. Pitch starts at two o'clock with twenty dollars per team, and we pay for three places. So. Uh, that's that's about what my part of the fair is. Okay, and that, and that's Saturday, July the eighth. Uh, yes, for the cornhole, and J Friday, July the seventh for the horseshoe pitching. Yeah. It says sixty percent on the first place, so that could get to be some pretty good money uh, if you have enough entry teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So we'll see. Uh, sometimes they have a state tournament uh, in uh, Knoxville or somewhere, and they they ain't, they ain't got to come for the for that. Yeah, well, that, 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 that's, that's a big deal. Uh, I know uh, uh, cornhole is becoming more and more popular, and, and of course, horseshoe pitching's always been popular. Yeah. 
So, and, and you know, it's, it's good to know that you guys are taking care of security. Uh, got the local police here and everything taking care of the fair because people want to be able to bring their children and it be safe and then be able to enjoy the fair and not have to worry about stuff. So I'm, I'm glad you guys are doing that. Yeah, we've been, uh, we've done, been doing this 16 years and uh, we've only had two or three episodes. Uh, yeah, and, and those were mild, so that's, that's, that's pretty good. And I also, uh, I don't have it listed down, but I do animal control, mm -hmm. uh, which we, we're going to do that a little different this year. Uh, but uh, we've only had, uh, I think, two cases uh, over that over, over these years. And uh, let me tell you, it's good in about one of the episodes. A guy from uh, Hendersonville was running, uh, had a food booth. Yeah. And we kept hearing a meow. <laughs> And they they called to me and, and yeah I said they they something in there, but I ain't, uh, I don't think we deal with that. Well we don't deal with cats really, but uh, so uh, uh, I went and, and uh, Steve Saxton was the animal control then, and I said Steve you got a little problem. He said what's that? I said well I got a got a meowing coming out of the fender well on the truck up here. Can you get it? He said, uh, well, yeah, I can get it. And uh, so uh, he uh, raised the hood up, and, and he got his arm down in there, and I, I seen him flinch. I said, did that cat bite you? Said, yeah, yeah, he bit me. <laughs> well, he got that thing out. And everybody, it was a pretty cat. They put it down here in the office and got a, a, a carrier case. And, and they, that cat had a, he was treated Top, not top cat. Top, no, it probably yeah. wound up with a good home. Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess it did. No, the, it was one of the neighbor's cats. They carried it back home. Really. Oh, they did? Yeah. <laughs> so, so in other words, if you're a stray cat and you want a home, come to the Smith County Fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Hollis, thanks a lot for coming by. All right, and thank you. you. You about to get well? Yes, sir, I'm feeling better. Well, sure. appreciate you having doing this. And I just telling uh, him, uh, they, it me out last year. I hope we don't do it this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Tom. Well, still talking about the fair, and I've got two lovely ladies here. Uh, they are with uh, UT Extension, and uh, you guys, uh, uh, actually, you've been there, both of you, a little while now. This is Mary, introduce yourself, and Rachel, then you introduce yourself. I'm Mary Draper. I'm the Family and Consumer Science Extension Agent for Smith County. And I am Rachel Petty. I'm the administrative ex assistant at the UT Extension office. Um, I've been there about three years, so this is my third fair. I'm not typically in front of the camera, but in front of the camera today and excited to be here. Yeah, and these guys do a great job over there at uh, UT Extension. And you guys are a major part of the fair because of all the uh, events that you have and the exhibits and, and like that. So what I, I think I'll do is just uh, uh, let you guys kind of take over. And uh, Mary, do you want to start talking about what you sure. got going on? Yes, yeah, so the Family and Consumer Science exhibits are the inside exhibits, um, and a lot of our FCE volunteers help with that. Um, but we'll be taking entries on June the 30th. That is a Friday. Um, from 7.30 until noon. Uh, so again, that's 7.30 until noon, and then we do judging right after that. So we wanna make sure that everybody gets those entries in. That's all um, Family and Consumer Science exhibits, um, except for two uh, exhibits. We take the floor culture and the cooking entries on Monday at the fair, July 3rd, from 7.30 until noon. And that's because um, the live uh, floor culture, we don't want them to get Dead, and then also uh, the cooking injuries, of course, kind of go bad as uh, as throughout the fair. So those do take are, are taken in on Monday, um, but the rest of the entries are taken in on Friday. So that's things like crafts and heirlooms, um, quilts, sewing, all that good stuff. So there's really a category for everyone, um, and there's no entry fee. So we really um, encourage you to. Um, to enter those different items in the fair. First place gets $5, second place gets four, and third place gets third. And there's also um, a best of show in all of the um, different 10 categories. I think fine arts, there's actually um, a professional and an amateur best of show. Um, and so best of show gets $10 as well as um, a best of show prize. Um, so we really encourage everybody to enter. Um, I know that everybody enjoys seeing each other's talents at the fair.
Okay, and, and sewing, needle craft, quilts, crafts, fine arts, photography, canning, cooking, floriculture, heirlooms, and then uh, down here, uh, if I didn't mention it, photography, I think I did, and then of course the 4-H displays and 4-H posters. So mm -hmm. there's a, a lot of categories that people can enter in. Yeah, so um, definitely photography is a, a big win because everybody has a smartphone almost nowadays, um, and of course, if you're like me, you're taking a picture of your child 24-7 uh, almost. Um, uh, definitely proud of her, and I like to catch the moments as she grows, um, but we have different photography categories and we encourage everybody to to participate in whatever capacity um, so it, if you're like me I might not be the best photographer but I do like taking pictures of my daughter um, so uh, I know that I, I would have a picture for that category um, so the different categories definitely okay all right and Rachel what do you got going on so I'm going to talk first about the 4-H youth exhibits. So all those same categories that Bill and Mary just talked about are open to youth in Smith County. Um, of course, at the Extension Office, we target those 4-H youth um, in the fourth grade and up, but the fair categories are actually open to anybody K through 12. So even those kiddos that are a little younger um, than 4-H age can still participate in the fair. Um, and we follow that same schedule that the FCS exhibits are on. So we will take entries on um, everything except cooking and floriculture on Friday, June the 30th. That is from 7.30 until noon. And then we will take those cooking and floriculture entries on Monday the 3rd from 7.30 until noon. And of course, if you can't remember all that, if you get one of these fair uh, brochures, actually it's a book, <laughs> and uh, it's got all of these uh, categories listed in there, and it gives the pages of, uh, of uh, you know, what the requirements are. Like, for instance, here's the youth exhibits, and it shows, uh, you know, what the different classes are and, and the lots and everything. So you guys have done a, a, a lot of hard work, uh, you know, putting this together. I mean, right there, that's just youth exhibits, and that's uh, two, well, a full page on two pages there. Yes, so uh, there's like a, Bill said, it does have the rules in there. I forgot to mention that. So um, there's are some stipulations in there and there's uh, different categories for each lot. Um, and uh, we usually have a miscellaneous section. So um, if we, we didn't get something maybe in there, then hopefully it can go go in that category. And, and actually I was wrong. Uh, it's actually three pages of youth exhibits. So you, you guys got a lot of things yes, going on. Yes, we've got a lot on, in there. If you can't find something to enter in the fair, um, there, there's lots of options for everybody. I think everybody can find something to enter, um, youth and adults. Um, and then while we're on the subject of exhibits, I will also talk about the agriculture exhibits. We have categories for adult agriculture and youth agriculture as well. And all of those entries will be taken on Monday, July the 3rd from 7.30 until noon. Um, and so we have kind of anything that you can think of for those agriculture categories too. We want your field crops like corn and soybean, tobacco, hay, but we also want your garden vegetables. If your garden is coming in um, in a couple weeks when the fair is, we want you to bring those vegetables, um, any kind of fruit. Maybe you have a backyard orchard. We want you to bring those fruits, let everybody see, enter them into the fair, um, and those will be on display all week. Um, and also for the youth category, we've got a couple unique things, a couple awards, um, opportunity for a little additional prize money for our youth agriculture exhibits. Um, we have a garden display category, and so the best garden display will win $20. And then we also have a best of show overall for our youth division in agriculture. And that award is a $75 tractor supply gift card, and you'll also get your name on a permanent plaque at the Ag Center. So definitely something to consider um, if you're a youth entering in those categories. Okay, and then in the garden display it says any container, so it, whatever you want to fix it up yes. in and bring. and we have people get really creative with those. We usually have a lot of good entries with that. Yeah, I, I can imagine because there's some beautiful stuff out there that yes. I've seen. Okay, uh, 
have we, and there, there is almost a full page of just the agriculture part of it. Um, so have we hit everything or is there anything else we need well, to Well, I think over? a couple more things. Um, while we're on the subject of 4-H, um, going back a little bit, we have our archery competition. And so that is one of the pre-fair events. That is before the fair um, officially starts. So that will be um, on Friday, June the 30th. So the same day um, that we're taking some of those entries that afternoon, we'll have an archery competition. At 4 p.m. At 4 right. p.m. Um, Bill's keeping me on track. It is a, a Genesis bow competition. So that's that's what our archers shoot um, and often we have a lot of overlap that's our kiddos that participate in our archery program um, and we actually had the biggest archery program um, that we've had so far I think this year um, at one time we had about 60 archers that were shooting with us um, in those after school practices with 4-H so we hope that a lot of those same kids come and participate in the archery competition at the fair Okay, well, ladies, uh, if that's, uh, and I, I know we didn't talk about everything, but if, is that, is there anything else that you want to mention? Let's talk about livestock shows. Okay, I've got that written down on my paper too. I came prepared. So livestock shows, um, we have something every night except for Tuesday. There is a livestock show um, at the fair and Tuesday you'll be busy with the carnival and with fireworks. So still plenty to do then. Um, I'll read off my paper because this is a lot to remember, but we'll start out Saturday, July 1st at 6.30. We're gonna have our draft horse and mule show. So that is a pre-fair event as well. That Saturday before things kick off, gonna have our draft horse and mule show. On Monday, July 3rd at 5 p.m., we're gonna start our open poultry show. So there's a little bit of overlap with that and 4-H as well. We have a lot of our 4-H chick chain kids participate in the open poultry show. And last year we actually created a new division for those 4-H chick chain pullets. And that is the same for this year. So if you participated in our chick chain show, have any of those black star and red star pullets that you're gonna show this fall with 4-H, you can bring those. There is a whole category just for you and of course the poultry show is open to anyone else as well we would love for you to bring your birds um, and if you don't have birds we would love for you to come and see all the beautiful birds that people will enter so moving on to Wednesday we have our open beef show that's gonna be July 5th at 6 p.m. The hog show is on Thursday, um, that's at 6 p.m. Um, and then the meat goat show is on Friday, July 7th, 5.30 p.m. And then we'll round things out with the sheep show on Saturday, July the 8th at 11 a.m. Um, and we always have a really big turnout for that. That is kind of an all day event. Like I said, we'll wrap it up with the sheep show. Um, lots of livestock events throughout the week. Um, if you have any questions about any of that, you can of course refer to the fair book or you can give our office a call at 615-735-2900. Okay, and I'm not sure you guys uh, are uh, a part of the this, but uh, we also have a dog and cat show that's going on on uh, Saturday, July the 8th. Uh, both of them, let's see, 9.30 and at 10 a.m. Uh, so there's a there's a just about everything you can think of in agriculture or animal husbandry uh, going on here at the fair. Absolutely. Okay, and then I think we have a special guest that's got a presentation that you are going to introduce our friend. Yes, so a friend of 4-H, a friend to all of us at the Extension Office. Coming up next is Into the Wild with Mr. Gabe Harville. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of In the Wild. As you can tell by the sign behind me, I am not in Smith County today. I'm at the Nashville Zoo, and today my camerawoman and I will be walking around showing you some animals that you can find. I highly encourage you to come here because it's great. One funny thing about the zoo is that besides all of the exotic animals, you get to see some native wildlife up close and personal. At today's zoo trip, we saw an eastern gray squirrel in the macaw exhibit, had an up-close encounter with a red-tailed hawk, and we almost stepped on a couple of broad-headed skinks, not to mention all the turtles that were in the ponds. The zoo creates an ecosystem that is nearly identical to these animals' native habitats. There were also various native plants used, like the oak leaf hydrangea, echinacea, or coneflower, and the southern magnolia, which are all native to Tennessee. 
Here you can see two resident trumpeter swans that have nested on an island in the middle of this pond at the Nashville Zoo. While we may not have this eastern diamondback rattlesnake in our state, we do have two of its close cousins, the pygmy rattlesnake and the more well-known timber rattlesnake. Here's another picture of a venomous snake that is fairly common in Tennessee, the copperhead. This next photo shows a picture of an alligator snapping turtle. Its more common cousin is the common snapping turtle, and this particular snapping turtle is found in West Tennessee and is listed as in need of management by the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. They've become rare due to habitat loss, and, but they are making a comeback. This next picture is an image of a big claw crayfish. It's a quite common crayfish species that you find in streams in Tennessee, and they're most prevalent throughout their range in Middle Tennessee. In the center of this picture, you can see a breeding male Baltimore Oriole. It's a common summer resident in Tennessee, and if you're lucky, you may have one in your backyard. These pictures here are two pictures of barn owls. They're common in the United States, but they are declining due to old farm buildings, barns, and silos being knocked down instead of left standing. You can see in this last picture I had an up-close encounter with an animal at the Nashville Zoo. This gentleman was exhibiting a corn snake. I hope you've all learned something today, because I know I have, and I hope you enjoyed walking around the zoo with us. I hope to see you next time in the wild. Now we get to talk about something that is a big part of the fair and, and every one of the competitions is called Fairest of the Fair and uh, this can lead on to a lot of other things. So ladies, if you would introduce yourselves and then just tell them about Fairest of the Fair. Okay, well I am Jerry Lynn Malone and this is Jonna Craighead and we are the pageant directors for the Smith County Fair Pageants. Um, this, this year the uh, fair is uh, from July the 3rd through July the 8th. Um, on July the 3rd, we start the pageants off um, on that Monday night with uh, Miss Fairest of the Fair and the Teen Fairest of the Fair. And then on Tuesday, July the 4th, we have the Junior Fairest of the Fair and uh, Petite Fairest of the Fair. Then Wednesday, July the 5th, we have the two and three year old boys and girls, the Mr. and Miss Tiny. And then on Saturday, we have the baby pageants, which are from um, birth to uh, six months, boys and girls, seven to 15 months, boys and girls, and 16 to 23 months, boys and girls. All of the fair pageant entry forms can be picked up at the Smith County Register of Deeds office, um, which is 122 High Circle Suite 113. That's Jerry Lynn's office. Mm -hmm. 
Um, any questions, please contact me or Jerry Lynn. We have um, our emails online on the Smith County Insider and also on the FAIR Facebook page. Jerry Lynn's email is jvaden at titlesearcher.com. Her cell phone is 615-489-5570. My cell phone number is 615-486-9359, and my email is johnacraighead at gmail.com. And if you win, you get to put uh, your picture for the next year into the uh, fair brochure. And I'll tell you what, that is some beautiful ladies that you had win last year. And I'm sure you're going to have a beautiful crop this year. Absolutely. We're really excited. And we can't wait to see who comes out and um, takes part in our competition. Okay. And if you all are wondering, well, I want to get in this, but I can't remember what they said, you can get one of these brochures uh, or booklets at uh, Chamber of Commerce and just about any business we in town. We have them at you the office. And you have them at your office so mm -hmm. so uh, ladies uh, yeah this is a wonderful thing and uh, this of course uh, you win Ferris to the fair and you can move on into other categories and uh, yeah if you win Miss Ferris to the fair you actually get to proceed on to the state convention in yeah. Nashville and it's a great time when I won and went I created memories to last a lifetime and I know that our last year's Ferris to the fair Janata Wallace also created those same memories so it's definitely worth coming out and participating in Oh, no doubt about it. And uh, a lot of these programs have scholarships tied to them and other things. So, Absolutely. so it's a wonderful thing. Well, ladies, is there anything we missed? No, I don't think so. Okay. Well, thank you for coming by and talking about fair to the Fair. Thank you so much. Well, we've got other things going on. Uh, I, I know we've been talking about the fair a lot, but uh, we've got an organization that does a lot of wonderful things here in the county, the Smith County Drug Prevention Coalition. And Kayla, why don't you introduce yourself and your guest? Uh, I'm Kayla Franklin. I'm a prevention coordinator at the Smith County Drug Prevention Coalition, and this is Miss Casey Stover. Um, she's a student at Smith County High School, and she came, and she's just going to tell you all a little bit about what she has, the event she's just come back from, TN Strong. Um, so she's going to share with you a little bit about that. Hello. Um, I went to Tennessee Strong, and we did all kinds of fun stuff. Um, we did interactive activities and there were the, all these different contests that you could participate in and you got to learn so much stuff about why drugs are bad and what you can do to help out in the community. Okay, and where was this at? Where this was in Chattanooga. In Chattanooga? Yes. Okay, so you had to have about a two hour drive to get there? Yes. And, and everything, and, and these guys, I'm sure they helped you get there, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's wonderful. Did anyone else go with you, or was it just you? Um, Miss Kayla went with me, and Miss um, Canapple, mm -hmm. and two other boys from the spot okay. also went. All right, so this, this was this sort of a group thing. And Tennessee Strong, and, and uh, like you said, that's talking about uh, uh, how you can stay away from drugs. And, yes, and, and how you and can help out in the community. Help out in the community. Well, I'm, I'm glad you came by today, and uh, I know you're probably helping at the spot and doing a lot of things with Kayla and these guys. Yes. Yeah, appreciate you being here. Thank you. Yes. Okay, I uh, think you got some events going on, right? Yes, so we have Hope Fest coming up again this year. That's going to be on July 29th from 11 to 1 right here at the Ag Center. Um, and we also have, uh, well, with that, there's going to be um, food and games. And we had a big time last year, so y'all come out and check that out. That is, uh, Hope Fest is a recovery fest, so we were supporting people in recovery and um, well and, and also if someone's uh, uh want to be a vendor I, I think they can get involved in it that way too right yes yes please come out if you would like to be a vendor if you could just contact us at our office our phone number is 615-588-1622 so just contact us reach out and um or you can contact us on facebook too so Okay, well, I know that's a good event. And then you got something else going on, too. Yes, and this year we're doing something a little different. This is our first time ever. We're going to do Camp Prevention Rocks. We're going to do this at the Carthage Church of God, um, right across from the rail, what do you call it? Rails, rails to Trails. trails. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this is going to be free. So your student that comes is going to get a free T-shirt, um, free prevention education. We're going to have Prevention Olympics. I'm really excited about this event. Um, and it's just a good way to get your littles kind of encouraged. Um, this is for middle school students. So if your student is in fifth grade through eighth grade, um, we would love y'all. We're going to provide the lunch. Um, 
we're going to have a lot of fun. So y'all come out and join us for that. Okay. And it's wonderful that you guys are putting these things on. And of course, uh, Drug Prevention Coalition is now off of uh, Water Street. Yes. Uh, 115 Water Street. Yes. And uh, these guys do a great job here in the county. If you want to know about their programs, uh, you can give them a call or, or just drop by and see them. Yes. Yes. Anytime. All right. Ladies, thank you for coming by. Thank you so much. Okay, we hope you've enjoyed this uh, June 2023 edition of the uh, Smith County Chamber of Corner. And we, of course, we talked about the Smith County Fair quite a bit, the fair on the river. And uh, we hope you uh, uh, got a chance to come by and uh, be with us at the fair here at the fairgrounds. Uh, just wanted to announce a couple of things. Uh, Saturday, July the 29th from 11 to 1 p.m. at the Smith County Ag Center, which is actually at the fairgrounds, they're having Hope Fest. And this is by the uh, Smith County Drug Prevention Coalition. And if you're interested in maybe setting a booth up or a table or something like that, or want to get involved in that, uh, you can give those call, guys a call at 615-588 1622 and they'll give you all the information about that also uh, they're going to have a back to school bash sponsorship opportunity and uh, the back to school bash is going to be held on july the 29th 2023 this year and a smith county events committee is the one that's putting that on and uh, you can contact them at smith county events at gmail.com or you can call us at the Ch smith county chamber of commerce 735 2093 and we can give you all the details about what's going on and they're always giving a lot of good things away to the kids that are going back to school so folks we hope you'll come out and support that and again thank you for watching the chamber corner and smith county is a wonderful place to live and raise children and work and and just there's a lot of good things going on so if you want to know more about smith county give us a call at the smith county chamber of commerce and we'll fill you in on what's happening until then God bless.